Uh, I promise to uh, go as quick, but um, I'll try to be as effective as possible as we go through a little bit of uh, formative assessments um, before we get you to lunch. So my name is Greg Eilers. Uh, I'm from uh, Modesto, California, so right down the road on uh, 99. I am the I work for our Stanislaus County Office of Education, so the other SCO um, down the road. I'm project coordinator of EdTech there, and uh, love what I'm doing. Before that, I did. Uh, sixth grade land for about 15 years and uh, absolutely loved it got my masters in ed tech and uh, now i'm doing this thing where i'm training teachers and i'm absolutely loving it so stoked to be here with you guys today if you would on your chrome browsers i would hope um, you're going to go to that bit.ly for me so go to the bit.ly slash formative cap q if you have not ventured there already And it is case sensitive, so it's got to be all lowercase. Uh, while you punch that in, what I've done basically is I have set up um, a website. This is the new Google Sites, y'all. Have you played with the new Google Sites? Do you like it's pretty it, sick. Or do you find it completely so my, my take on Google Sites as of right now is I can see where they're going with it. And I think it's super smart. I think what they're doing is they're trying to make it more user friendly. There's a couple things that I don't like. You can't embed HTML stuff yet, like you could with the old sites. Um, like some of the formatting as far as centering certain things and stuff like that, they kind of limit you to. But I, I think that's the, the idea right now, is just to keep it super simple it and then add on to it. Uh, so what you'll see is you will see our home page here. But then the three formative assessment tools that we're going to talk about is quizzes, which John Carippo stole my thunder in his uh, keynote today, but that's all good. Um, and then Pear Deck and Edpuzzle. Um, anybody using any of these three? All three of them. I was going to say, why are you here then? Um, anyways, that's what we're going to cover. And I'm not going to really talk about the website, but you can click on those tabs, and it will kind of walk you through how to set up the teacher side of it. Because what I want to expose you guys to is how to, you know, what it looks like from the student end. And again, those of you that are familiar with a couple of these, you kind of know how they work. But for everybody, I just want to give you the student's eye view because ultimately, formative assessment, it's about the kids, right? I mean, that's what, that's what our purpose is, number one, as teachers, but to make sure that we're giving them formative assessment and we're checking in on what they're actually learning that day at that moment is absolutely critical. And, and when I was in the sixth grade you know, world, that was something that I always prided myself on. What are my kids learning right after I taught it? Right? I didn't want them to go away, do you know, an hour of homework, come back the next day and find out nobody got anything the day before, because now I've just lost all that time. And so the objective today is to kind of find a tool, maybe two of them, and go, yes, that works for me. No, that's lame. I'm never going to use that. Or I'm going to think about it. So hopefully you kind of dabble in some of these today and see kind of some things that fit in your setting and, and, and where you teach. Um, just to give me an idea, are we, uh, how many of you are elementary teachers? Okay, junior high? Love that age. My son's in eighth grader right now, so we're like full into that right now as parents. Uh, high school? Radical, so we gotta give mixed bag. Okay, so um, all three of these are designated for, or designed for all age levels. So don't think just because you're, you know, in a certain um, you know, level, you can't use one of these. All of them are, are designed for everything. So, again, I'm not going to relate too much to the websites, but they, these are here for you to, to relate back to after the session and go, how do I do that? How do I set up a Pear Deck? That kind of stuff. But what you are going to want to follow is on the website, I do have a Google Slides set up. So, if you want to click into that, uh, that's kind of what's going to guide us today. And uh, again, if I go too fast, please stop me, raise a hand, shout at me, throw, at, throw something at me. I'm all good with it. Um, but we do have to be out at lunch in about 40 minutes. Otherwise, you will start throwing stuff at me. So I am going to go quick. Okay, so I already told you who I am. I am on the Twitters at Greg Eilers. If you're there, uh, give me a follow. My email is there as well. Wanted to start out with this quote. You know, with formative assessment, a teacher can give the right instruction at the right time as his or her teacher becomes responsive to students rather than responsive to other forces. And I just thought that, was, that quote was really powerful as far as thinking about, you know, again, who, who, who we are trying to instruct. Who are we trying to, 
gather knowledge from as far as what their level of understanding is when it comes to what, what they're teaching them. So formative assessment is that idea of just getting that snapshot of what our students are learning. So that leads me right into this. Why? Why formative assessments? Well, I just said it, a snapshot. It gives us a snapshot as teachers as to what our kids are actually understanding and what they're learning, right? Right away. Informative. It informs us of what our audience is actually kind of keeping in their brains. What are they actually doing with the knowledge that we're giving them? You know, it's informing of us of how we can redirect our teaching and where we need to go next. Do we need to review? Because I can see my, my kids totally sucked it up on this. I got to backtrack and kind of reteach some stuff. Or, yeah, my kids killed it, let's move on, right? Instead of waiting for that cumulative multiple choice, you know, boring test to where now I've got my feedback and my results now, you know, whoa, that was a month ago when we did that, you know, you've lost all that time. So it's informing you immediately of what your students are gaining, right? Efficient, uh, you saw this morning with John's uh, little quizzes example, which we're going get to get to here in a second, you know, none minutes, right? You don't have to worry about grading and it doesn't take much time. It's efficient, it gives you that feedback that you need immediately. And then finally, you can be creative, right? When I was in school or when I was teaching, like I hated giving my kids, you know, the 30 copies of a multiple cho choice test and I just say go, right? I just, I didn't like that because there was not a whole lot of creativity for me, from my side, to be able to assess my kids. Um, because for one, some of my students, and I was one of these kids, I was horrible at taking the, you know, the normal type of test. And a lot of my kids, same way. I didn't want to put them into a box to where I'm going to assess you only in this way, right? There's just something wrong about that. And so in this case, you're able to be a little bit more creative. You're able to spin it to your kids because you know them, right? As opposed to Hoot and Mifflin's already one-size-fits-all test that they've created for who knows who. Right? So you're able to create it for your kids that you are dealing with day in and day out. Okay? So that's the why. And so I just want to kind of frame it like that as far as why you should think about formative assessments on a daily basis, if not hourly basis. Right? Okay, so we're going to look at these three. Okay? We're going to look at quizzes, we're going to look at Pear Deck, and we're going to look at Edpuzzle. All right? So the first thing I want to do is I want to put you in one. Okay? So I'm going to just give you a quick rundown of what quizzes can do. You already saw a demo of it this morning. Um, basically what quizzes can do, like you saw, is it allows you to go at your own pace, which is huge. That's why John kind of blasted Kahoot this morning, because at Kahoot, you're at the mercy of the teacher, right? You're at the mercy of when I say the next question, go. Whereas quizzes, you were all able to do it at your own, own pace. Was there a competitive factor in there? Yeah, because again, the quicker you answer, the more points you get. But the idea is you've got kids working at their own level and at their own pace. And then you saw the review factor to where you can kind of repeat what you did. Okay? Um, so yeah, before we actually jump in, here's some upsides to it. Great for quiz prep. Self-paced, I talked about. Great for an exit ticket, which is kind of the, the, the buzzword right now as far as formative assessment goes. Um, you can play prepped quizzes already. Again, just like a hoot, there's already a huge bank of quizzes already created for you that you can go in, steal, or as we say in education land, collaborate on. And they're super fun, right? They're a blast. You had a lot of fun playing those today. And then kids, you know, get a kick out of the memes that, that pop up. You can create your own memes uh, to make it a little bit more personal. Um, just to give you a heads up, one, one idea that I give teachers is I created memes in quizzes, bless you, to where uh, I created my own students memes. So I took a picture of my students and I put them in a meme and it said, you know, whatever it was uh, as far as correct answer or wrong answer. And so it personalized it for my kids and they kind of got a kick out of that. So one idea. So that's an upside. Downside to quiz, um, it is multiple choice. So in, in common core land, um, I know we're trying to get uh, constructive responses, free response as much as possible, right? Um, in this case, you're only set up to where you can choose multiple choice. Uh, specific results, so sometimes it doesn't allow you to, to uh, do some of the things that Common Core or Smarter Balance wants you to do to where you need to draw certain things or, or, or do certain stuff like that. So it's very specific in that sense. Um, if you do build your own, uh, it does, there is some time as far as, it, uh, as far as how long it takes to construct something. 
And then finally, um, there's no video integration. And the reason for that is, is think about it. You know, everybody's going at their own pace. They're all on different questions. You'd have different videos popping up all over, and that will get really distracting. So in Kahoot, you can embed like a YouTube video, right? But again, that's teacher paced. It's all going at one time. Everybody's watching the video at the same time. Whereas quiz is, eh, videos would be all over the place and it would kind of, you know, I could see, especially my daughter who's, you know, OCD, she would get crazy as far as not being able to focus on one thing and it would be very distracting. So that's why there's no video integration in quizzes. All right, are you ready to play? Let's do this. I want to see uh, how we do, and we'll talk a little bit deeper as far as uh, what quizzes can do, um, a little bit more than what John kind of covered today. So here's quizzes. Again, if you're not familiar with the back end of it, um, I'm going to click play live, and this is on pop, uh, pop culture and stuff. You are going to go, actually on your, uh, on your slide there, you can click on the quizzes logo, and it'll take you right to join.quizzes.com. Unfortunately, we're having the love of technology go here. Let's try her again. There we go. So here's your code, 208756. So we've got Chelsea in. Again, your URL right there is join.quizzes.com. Yes, go. Yep, join.quizzes.com if you don't want to click on the link on the presentation. Which one of these boxes So this is on the website. So actually, we're going to go back to the home and launch the presentation. So this part is more for you to come back to, like after today's session, and look and see how you would set something up. Yep, so go through. And keep going a couple more times. Click that one, and you should be able to, it might give you a link. There you go. Yeah, so I would instruct students, you know, hey, let's shut off our volume, right? Let's make sure we can focus and things like that. So for us, we might be able to handle it, but for some students, that would be way too distracting, right? Just keep your students in mind with that. All right, we got 24 troops in. You can see if you know how many students you have. Obviously, you know that you're ready to go. Um, this is also great if you've got the students coming in late, right? With Kahoot, you're five questions in. You can't go back, right? Where with quizzes, students come in from resource or a student comes in you know, late or, or whatever the case may be. You can have them jump in. The code is always going to be visible to them. You say, hey, jump into quizzes, put in the code, and they start where they're at. OK? So all right, 27 troops, we good? All right, let's fly. Pop culture and stuff. And again, as a teacher, I don't necessarily need to leave this screen up. I could have my projector off. You are just focusing on this because some kids might be focused on total correct and total wrong. And I wouldn't necessarily want that. By the way, when there's an image, you can click on the question and it will show the image a little bit better if you need to look at that image. So good news, we are on the right side of the right. So even right now, I'm taking a formative assessment in my brain as you, as you take this, even now. I'm getting that feedback, I'm seeing, oh, you know what, we're, I killed it on that lesson. We're doing pretty good, right? And we're not even done. This is right in the middle of the test. And I think that's everybody. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to end game. And at this point, obviously you saw this morning that here's your immediate feedback, right? I don't have to wait till I go home and grade all these. I can get that immediate feedback right now. I can see how well we did. I can see which students maybe I need to pull some small groups back into, whatever the content may be, right? So what a fantastic grid that literally I can look and see and go, yeah, nailed it. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh, these three. Small group time, right? Yeah. Does it keep this information for me like in a dashboard or something? Correct. Yep. Okay. And so that was the next piece I was going to show. Right. So yeah, no, no, absolutely. 
um, because as a teacher, you want to make sure that you have that data to pull in case you need to give it to somebody or we need to you know, have parent conference or whatever it might be. Um, that data will be there for you. Okay. So since that question was just asked, you see exports results. Right now, I just downloaded it into an Excel file. Okay. So download it right there for me since I'm using Chrome. Um, obviously, you can then turn that into a Google Sheet if you're somebody that prefers Sheets and, and then it saves it in your Google Drive, right? So there's multiple ways that you can keep your data. Um, but let's say that we just want to see this actual quiz. Okay. So I just clicked on Reports, and right now this gives me question by question, you know, analysis of how we did per question. And right away we can have that conversation with your students. Right now we can talk, hey, you know, what happened on, you know, number seven? Well, only 66% of us got that one right. And so that, that discussion can happen right then. The kids don't necessarily need to wait for teacher who uh, takes forever grading whatever the assessment or the test might be to where, you know, three, three four, five days later, the conversation then happens or we have that review, right, or the reteach. It can happen right now. Right, because that data is immediate and it's given it, given it to us right now. Okay, so that's by question. Okay, you can also download the Excel file from here as well. Again, it gives you your accuracy, tells me how many questions, how many players were involved, and I can print it. Right, want to stay paperless, but you can print. There's an option. And so one other thing, I, you know, if we're talking everything, pros and cons. The other thing I don't like about quizzes is you can only select one correct answer. That is kind of one nice thing in Kahoot to where you can select multiple answers as being correct, right? So, I mean, again, find what fits for you, for your kids, for your situation, and, and, and the desired goal or outcome that you want, right? That's the idea here, and personalizing it for them. I can go by player if I wanted to. I can go through all of my list of students, and uh, look at this, Kelly, I got this. Uh, I like that name, uh, did pretty well. It gives me a little fraction, so I can even embed some fraction knowledge in here okay so very good so there's the reports again uh, let me let me show you you know maybe you want to refer back to this after you've done it maybe you've you've, you've reviewed it now you want to get back to it it's been two weeks maybe you want to see how you did on this uh, on this test when you give it again so there's two tabs here so I've got running which is our quiz that we just took right now or I can go to completed so these are all of the quizzes that I've given to my students over time, right? Okay. I can pull one back okay, and talk about how we did then if I wanted to. And I can compare and contrast. You know, look at the growth that we made when we first started learning this, guys. We took this, and now we took it again. Maybe you made some tweaks to it, and now you see the improvement, and you can show your students right then and there, right? Because not only are you stoked, but then you can prove to your students, look at the growth you guys made. So the reports kind of give you that that um, insight as well. Go. Was there a way on those reports for like individual students that didn't do as well to like print out what they don't know? Yes. Great question. So let me go back to completed. Okay. I'm just going to jump into a random one here. And so I went into completed and at the top there's questions or players. So I go to my players. Here's, uh, here's artsy Amy. I can print out how she did just her on that specific quiz. So there's a little print icon that I can get um, on how she did on that specific quiz. So she actually tore it up, she got 90%. Want to pump her up a little bit, say, wow, you know, here you go. Take this to mom, you killed it, right? You, if you went in to search for a quiz and you found someone, but you wanted to tweak it to make it your own, yep. you copy theirs and make your own? Yeah. yeah. So this is what you guys are gonna do afterwards. You're gonna play. But since you're asking all these awesome questions, uh, yes, you can. So like if I wanted to search, so again, I'm in public, right? So here's all the public quizzes. When you create a quiz, you get the option to make it public or private, right? So everybody that's chosen public, as far as teachers that have created these, you can, you can view, right? So if I were to create, you know, search for a quiz on, you know, let's put in Egypt, okay? And the nice thing is, here's all the quizzes that come up. I can preview them right here. I don't even need to click into them. So I can preview it as I go down. I can see on the right-hand side how many questions there are and what kind of questions are being asked. So if I find one I like, I go into it, 
And then there is a duplicate button right there. So it's like make a copy in Google world. You duplicate it, and then you can edit to your heart's content of however you want it to be done. Okay. I, do, I will preface this. Uh, we saw that with John's quiz this morning in the keynote. Uh, you know, when you take a quiz, I'm not going to say the word steal, when you take a quiz, uh, just make sure that you proofread it and make sure that it's accurate in the way that you want it to be, right? Because sometimes uh, these aren't always exactly the way that they should be, and you might find some inaccurate answers in there. Yeah? Is it possible to have a link to it, and like for homework or for it to be viewed later? Great question. So quizzes, again, John Seal and my thunder this morning, you can integrate quizzes into Google Classroom. So if you are using Google Classroom, you can just join it right to there or send the link there. Kids just click on the link and then boom, they're in. You can set time limits. So you notice there was one question in your quizzes that uh, only gave you 10 seconds, right? You needed to find the, the, the misspelled word in 10 seconds. So you can set it all the way up to five minutes. So that you can give them five minutes to answer a specific question. So maybe you, it's a math quiz that you're giving them and they need time to work it out. Right, so you want to allow them that time. Most of these I think I set to 30 seconds and then it would move you on. Um, so again, it's up to you how you want to set it up. You know your students best. So you set it up to, to, to make them successful or what you want to actually assess. How many of you used Paradox before? Okay, a couple of you. Now I will preface this with this. Side note, little asterisk here. You will need a Google account, Google account to participate with this part of the presentation. So if you don't have a Google account, like a personal, or your school district's GAF account, um, you're going to need to just kind of look on or, or kind of see up here. The reason for that is, is because Pear Deck um, puts all of their information into your Google Drive, which is awesome because then you have all of it integrated automatically. So it creates a folder in your Google Drive, and you can see everything that you've actually created with Pear Deck. Okay? Um, just to give you a little heads up of what Pear Deck looks like, um, you will get some questions given, but notice that they won't just be multiple choice. There will be multiple different types of questions that you can ask. My favorite part about Pear Deck, personally, is, and we've all done this because we've lived in, 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 in teacher land long enough to know that certain things come up that you weren't expecting, right? I mean, how many of us have had a perfect lesson? <laughs> how many of us have had a perfect lesson? Never, right? because of something that came up that you're like, whoa, I didn't even think about that. So what Pear Deck does is during a formative assessment situation, you can ask a quick question. So maybe you're seeing a result come in and you're like, huh, I wonder why, why my kids are answering like that. That's kind of weird. So what you'll see is Pear Deck, you can stop the assessment, jump to this quick question and go, hey, you know, I see, I see that we're all answering this way. Why? Right? And so you can kind of do a quick assessment on the spot to, to kind of gauge why your students are answering a question the way that they are. So you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, I like this because you can kind of uh, give them some markers and they can drag a dot to thumbs up, thumbs down. So those of us that like to do Chuck for understanding with that, we can kind of digitalize it in kind of a different way. Okay. Now I will say this, Pear Deck does have a premium. So to get kind of the goodies, you do have to buy. I know a lot of schools have chipped in to get site license because they see the benefits of this type of formative assessment. So some of the stuff that you'll see that I'm using is under the premium account, and that's because I want to show you kind of all the bells and whistles. But as far as formative assessment goes, if, there, if you're just doing the basics, that might just be enough for what you need, right? So the stuff they give you for free might just be sufficient for what you actually need. It does sync nicely with Google Classroom. So you can sync Pear Deck with Google Classroom to where you can see when students have logged in and then you're ready to go. Okay. All right, so let's jump into Pear Deck. If you're following along in the presentation, just click this screen and it'll take you right to PearDeck.com slash join. Okay. So I'll give you a minute to go there. I'll give you the code. And again, if you, if you link this to Classroom, the kids won't need a code. They'll just click on the link in Google Classroom and it'll take them right into that quiz. So you bypass the, the, the code altogether. Okay. And again, I kind of set all these quizzes or these assessments up a little bit, you know, for fun, for us. You think about, you know, be creative. You guys are teachers. You are the most creative people in the universe. 
think about how you would then apply this into your own setting, right? This is more for just kind of fun purposes, but think, you know, outside of what I'm doing, like, ooh, I could use this piece here, or I could use this piece with this type of thing. Okay, here's your code. It is Q, W, X, V, L, quintessential wombats, x-ray, vexing lemons. So again, think, think real life lands, right, with kids. You know, this time where people are going to have to punch in stuff, you know, the more you do this, the quicker the kids will get at it. But if you're using it to where you've got it synced with Google Classroom, they click on it and they're already in. Right? So if you're wanting to use, with, use this with your little ones, primary students, and you have Google Classroom, they click on it, they don't have to type in this code. All right, so what I do now when I know that everybody's in, you can see kind of my teacher dashboard is down here, my control center, if you will. So I'm going to click the arrow, and now it's going to put you into presentation mode. Here's your first question. If you're familiar with the next Netflix phenomenon, Stranger Things, which character is your favorite? And so there's a list, so this is an example of a multiple choice. So notice down here, right now, if I wanted to, I could look at everybody's responses coming in. And there's a little eyeball. So now it's open, it's got, giving me the green light to where I can see what your answers are as they come in. Okay? So I can see that, you know, Miss L or Eleven uh, is, is a lot of people's favorite characters, Mike. If I want to lock everybody's responses, what, what happens on your screen? You're now locked out, right? Maybe I got a couple kids not taking it serious. Ah, you know what? I'm locking you. <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to redo this one. And so look what I can do now. So I've locked you. We're going to ask it again. And now it resets. And you can hear already the kids going, oh, man, I'm going to do it again, especially for the ones where they've got to type them in. Do that a couple times, I guarantee you, they'll start taking it a little bit more serious, right? So you've got control, which again can be a good thing. It can also be kind of a bad thing, right? Use it to the strength of your students and the purpose of your quiz. So again, you can, with Pear Deck, you can embed a video. So maybe for this specific assessment, you want to embed a video for them to watch. Again, you're kind of at the mercy of the teacher, right? So you're watching this. Now there's a question that's going along with the video. Okay. Also right here, I want to find out, okay, why is everybody choosing L? Let's pretend. So I want to ask that quick question. Remember I, how I said earlier, right in the middle of the assessment, I want to find out why, why, what, what's going on in my students' brains right now? Why are they answering that way? So I can ask a quick question about anything right, on the, right off the spot. And so right now I'm going to prompt a quick question saying, uh, you know, Let's go shoot, let's go long answer. You know, why, is every, why does everybody like Eleven? Why is that your favorite character? Again, those of you that haven't seen it, you're like, What's, what are you talking about? You're crazy. But this is where you could quickly have your students respond to something to where they're like, oh. Or as a teacher, I'm going, oh, okay, now I see why they're thinking that. Right? Because now they're expounding a little bit about why they answered that way. Okay? By the way, this uh, piece is part of the freemium. So this comes with the free. This isn't the premium piece. So you can do this much with your kids, which is powerful. Okay. Again, I can get responses right now from the ask a question spur of the moment. So here we go. Look at this. I don't know. I don't know. She's most sympathetic. She can move stuff with her mind. Right there, people should be going, ooh, she can move stuff with her mind. I'm watching tonight. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what the show is. So again, I'm gathering knowledge right now. Okay. So this should pop up on your screen. And it says, stocks, now actually, this is on my screen. What's on your screen is an actual website that I can direct you to, which is pretty sweet. So when you're constructing a Pear Deck, you can type in a website that you want to pop up to all of your students. And then in this case, I want you to explore this website and then tell me why is it important to use photos that are free from copyright restrictions for educational purposes. So maybe you've talked about some digital citizenship with your kiddos about how you need to make sure that you're citing resources. Well, the website that I'm showing you is a site that is completely copyright free images. So students could 
then scroll through and look through some images that they can use for whatever purpose because they're copyright free. Okay? This is a bonus for you guys, by the way. Stock Snap is awesome. Um, check it out. Great way to pull off images that are really well done, free, and copyright free. Okay? Yeah? Want to get back appropriate content? What's that? I said appropriate content. Sure. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say, obviously, and this is what I always suggest to everybody, go through your images, go through the site first for you, search a couple of things that you think your students might search for, and see what comes up. Right? So, good question. Okay. So there's that option to where you can share a website in a Pear Deck. Next, use one of the emotions on your screen and drag it to the left to describe how you're feeling today. So what I did when I constructed this quiz, there was a grid set up. I set up some little uh, smiley faces or sad faces or kind of in the middle. And all I want you to do is to drag it to the left to show me how you're feeling today. So I can show answers. And this is what's happening right now. Now, even teachers, yeah, even teachers do this. <laughs> right? Your students are going to do that too. So just be prepared. Okay? This is a science lesson right here. Right here, we can talk about red blood cells and how they're moving. Okay, so I can lock that so you can't do that stuff anymore. But if I have students tell me, you know, honestly how they're feeling right now, I can get just a quick gauge. So what a cool way to kind of see, you know, the, the, the temperament or the level of, of emotions going on in your world, right? Especially in sixth grade, right? That's always a fun age. Okay. And then I could go to my quick question. If I want to ask, you know, why are we feeling this way? You know, what's going, what happened on the playground at lunch? You know, why, what, what's going on? So you can kind of find out a little bit about what they're feeling just from using something like this. I do. You're right. You're right. Okay. So there's that. Uh oh. We're getting controversial now. Okay, so drag the line to the agree or disagree side on how you feel about Colin Kaepernick taking a knee when the national anthem is being played. He. Some of you are going, ooh, this guy's going there. Yeah, I'm going there. Turlock is right next to Modesto, so it's right from our background. Right in our backyard. That one, the latter. Yep. Sorry. So yeah, I'd want to revise, you know, revise this to make it a little bit more clear, right? So right now, again, I'm watching where this is falling. Okay. And I don't necessarily need to show this. Again, my projector could be off. I'm just watching from my screen, so I don't get those kids going like this because they want to see, <laughs> right? So, exactly. Okay. So what a powerful way, again, to start that conversation, right? And again, you, you, sometimes you have to think about a, a formative assessment, not necessarily something that they're giving you for you to grade, okay? It's not necessarily always about grading where they're at. It's about gauging what they're thinking at that moment in time after a lesson or their discussion piece that you want them to come away with. Go. So the, the screen and the, and the previous one with the quadrants, yeah. is kind of a stock screen? It is. It's a template, yep. Yes. Question was, uh, the, this screen and the one with the uh, grids, are those uh, you know, stock? Do they come with it? Yes. Those are templates. But you can also add in your own templates depending on what you're wanting to assess. But yes, th these two come, come with it and it's the free piece. Okay. A couple more. We've got to keep going. Ah. Now, it's going to be a little bit tricky if you've got a touch screen or something like that. This will be a little bit easier for you. So I want you to draw your best picture of a flower. These are the ones that I always like to show. Yeah, no. So right now, it's coming in. Yeah. Color. Somebody found color. That's pretty. Okay. That's pretty. That one looks like a balloon. That's cool. Butterfly waiting for the stem. Cute. So again, I'm sharing this one. This one is actually part of the premium, right? So this one's 
part of the paid one to where if you want them to draw, you've got to kind of have the paid piece for this part. But it's an option, right? Especially for our primary kids, what a fantastic way for them to, to show something, right? Any age, any age, it's good to draw. Okay. <laughs> for time constraints, I'm going to keep us going, but you do have that draw idea now that you could have your students possibly do. I'm sorry, I know, teachers already get mad, always get mad. Wait, it wasn't done. Okay, place a dot approximately where the city of Sacramento is on the map of California. So maybe, you know, you're teaching fourth grade, you just got over where the capital of our own state is. You want to see if they have any clue if they retain any of this information. Yep. So yeah, you just draw a dot. You, if, you, if you want, you can change a color. And again, I'm going to show what's coming in. Maybe. It's, it, as you draw, you are submitting. And you can reset it if you change your mind, right? For some reason, mine's not showing. <laughs> so this is a map that I, that I pulled in, obviously, right? This, this would not be one that's stock. So this is one that I would upload into my Pear Deck question uh, uh, for this specific you know, piece of geography that I want to know about, right? So I just taught it. I'm finding out what, what, are, what we know. Oh, hello. And then scroll down. So each one has an individual map. So there you go. Ooh, somebody got tricky and actually labeled. There's our overachiever, wherever you're at. Okay. We even got water over here or seagulls. OK, um, let's see. So again, you'd pull in this map of what you want to assess, and it could be anything, right? In this specific purpose, you know, what a great way to see if kids have an idea of where something's at, right? Maybe a pre-assessment. Maybe you want to know if kids have any idea where, where Egypt is, because you're about to teach on, on ancient Egypt or, or Mesopotamia or whatever it might be. All right, so there's that, labeling maps. Next, going a little bit quicker. Okay. If you were to get on a plane right now and take off to anywhere in the world, where would your destination be? And my, my GIF is not working right now. But you can't upload GIFs or GIFs or as some people call them, GIFs, uh, to where your animation moves. Um, so here's your free response. Yeah, it's going in a circle. Is it working on yours? No? No, no. Fail. Oh, hidden, hidden. Here we go. Ah, uh, Maui. Ah. Uh, wait, which one's yours? Keep going. Your mom's house. <laughs> Cute. Ah, gotcha. That is sixth grade minds, right? Yeah. The Thomas. Wow. Okay. All right. So again, again, keep that in question in mind, right? Maybe I want to pursue this a little bit. Why? I'm going to ask about anything. Okay. So why? You know, tell me a little bit more about that. Why do you want to go to, you know? the Bahamas or wherever it might be. Why do you want to come to my mom's house? All right, so. Okay, so there's that piece too. And I shared that one, it was kind of a fail, but you can import you know, animated pictures to come in um, if you want to. All right, and finally, how many years have you been in education? So this is an example of just a number question, that's all. You just submit a number and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, and again, I can pull that data, and if you have the premium, you can then, because remember, you're signed in your account, I see still who is answering, right, the way that you answered afterwards. So that's a great point, right? Kids are going to be a little bit more risky and honest when they know that their name's not attached to it, in some ways a bad way, to where somebody might, you know, go out on a limb and try to, you know, be a little bit funny or, or, or not appropriate, right? But those conversations have to happen, right? So anyways, yes, I do find that. Um, OK? OK, so this is where it would end, right? What does it say on your screen? 
Yep, just a pair. Okay, and this is where it's done. Now, one last thing. Let me see if I can zoom this in. So I can, this is brand new. Right there, you were at, at the mercy of me. Again, teacher driven. But now Pear Deck has just recently added in student paste. So I could just say, go. You don't have to wait for me. And they would then kind of be on their own pace taking this assessment. So that's brand new. That just was added in it's to it. I think that is a free piece. I have to look at that, but I think it is the free. Don't quote me on that. But then when you're done, you click end this session. You title it. See what I did there? OK. And then right here, again, I hate saying this because I hate, it sounds like I work for Pear Deck, but I really don't. Um, in the premium, they give you student takeaways. So I can literally send a Google Doc, because remember, this is attached to your Google accounts, to each student of how they did, right? So then they can see what they you know, uh, put into their, their answers or whatever. So save and end session. OK. I can share this to Google Classroom as well if I wanted to, as far as the takeaways go, and then return home. Holy cow, we're out of time. My gosh. I do not want you to start throwing stuff at me. OK, so real quick, Edpuzzle. OK, I'm just going to highlight just a couple of things. Um, Edpuzzle, again, how many people have used Edpuzzle? OK, a couple of you. So Edpuzzle is kind of your video way to assess. And you can pull in any video to where you can show students and ask them questions while the video is playing. So real quick, this is the last thing I'll show you, and then we'll get you out to lunch. Um, so on this slide right here, there's an actual link that takes you to an Edpuzzle. And just for the sake of time, I'm just going to play it so you can see it. So I clicked on it. This is what an Edpuzzle does. Notice that down here, I have already created some questions for Edpuzzle. So I'm going to hit play just real quick. Thought this was appropriate right before we go to lunch. How many of you seen this? Yeah. Classic, right? Pay close attention to this video as there will be questions that are asked of you that you will be expected to answer. Ah, so the voice of God, I mean the teacher, came on. So wow, I'm listening to this. My teacher just told me to do something. I'm going to make sure I pay attention. And then as you go, I get a little prompt here. Which animals do you think will be demonstrated in how animals eat their food? So free response. I get a little idea. Analysis comes back to me. I can see what the students are thinking or saying while they're watching a piece of media that they might be a little bit more engaged in than, again, a multiple choice test or something like that. So I apologize for running out of time. I don't want to get into your lunch. Any last minute questions on anything? Edpuzzle is free. Any Zaption users, previous Zaption users, because it's going away? Edpuzzle's made it easy to where you can import all Zaption lessons that you've made.